semifinal number two should be a high scoring affair between Auburn and New Mexico. Which of these two teams will advance to a championship game meeting tomorrow night with Richmond? Richmond already moving on with a 10 point win and an impressive one at that over Wisconsin. And for New Mexico. Some very well-known faces if you're a college basketball fan. He has built it up. They've recruited very well. And they've been coached very well. And subsequently, their success has, has been proven. Watch Malawatch knocks one down for wins. And with that, you say goodbye to Jared Harper, say goodbye to Bryce Brown, say goodbye to Chuma Okiki, and you have to find those answers now this year. Yeah, and we're bonding. I'll ask Fran for Schilla. He's here. Perfect, yes. He'll probably be watching another team play that we don't even know where they're playing at. <laughs> Malawatch can't hit, but Bragg will follow. You watch a lot of these Feast Week tournaments. You see guys walking around in polo shirts. Purifoy from way outside. Has his pocket picked at midcourt by Caldwell. Taken right back, though. And down the lane with the left hand is a court. Entire game. Like, Coach, it's an off night for you. Relax. <laughs> There's no off button. Soft touch in the paint for Corey Menegal. Our final loss of the season to Fran Fraschilla and New Mexico at the pit with Ruben Douglas. He's watching his old team here as Menegal is able to follow. And with the steal. Dowdy tried to go behind the back. Another steal for Caldwell. And the hit ahead for the easy two for Menegal. A really nice pass. One touch from Malawatch. They've got to, both these teams have got to settle down. You want to play fast, but you want to play smart. Malawatch with the reverse. He's a member of the Australian Junior National Team at the FIBA U18 World Championships. Okoro cruises to the goal. Away from Devin Cambridge's teammate. The team that values the ball better in this game and settles into their rhythm first. That's going to be the one that takes control. Nice feed from McCormick as he hits Jamal Johnson in the corner for a wide open three. Oh. Wild scoop is shut down. That to nowhere. Okora pinned by Bragg up against the glass. Picks up his dribble eight to shoot. Purifoy back outside. And there's a three. Caldwell lobs one inside to Bragg. He can't connect. Ripped away by Akora. Samir Doughty cruises in. Finishes. Hot, right? A guy you get the ball to, a guy you know wants to score that has it, the nose for scoring. McLemore left alone. It's another three. Anthony from North Carolina, if you haven't seen him play, he's one of the faces of our sport. Cruising in for an easy two. Alan Flanagan off yet another turnover. Jaquan Lyle, floater goes. Route. It was a little bit over seven minutes for New Mexico. Front of the rim and a put back off the miss by Javon McCormick. Malawatch throws it down off the feed from Lyle. How about that? Malawatch has been the guy for New Mexico in the early stages of this game. Jaquan Lyle shakes, bakes, scoops, rejected, thrown out by McLemore. You're staring at multiple bodies in front of you. Zero passes in an offense. Old school floater from McCormick. He leans in. That's blocked. Well done defensively for Akinbola, and at the other end, it's Purifoy. They're shooting 26% from beyond the arc, 19 three-point attempts already in this game. They're 41% inside the three-point line. There's Dowdy. Another triple on the way, and this one's good. He's got five already tonight. Another bad shot from Lyle. Carlton Bragg rattles home the follow. Center. And I can't imagine that that was a very pleasant New Mexico locker room at halftime as the second half begins with a McCormick three. McCormick, the floater, way short. Purifoy. Caught underneath the backboard, but adjusts and lays it in. He's learning about his team. I think what he's learning about his team is that they have areas they need to clean up. Wiley at the rim. A nice bounce pass from McCormick. That three rattles home for Vance Jackson. 
Jackson looking for back-to-back -back threes. That one's no good, but there's Malawatch. Shovels one to Jackson, lays it in. Main stops and lessen the quality of look. Even their last possession, Auburn was wide open. McCormick, Wiley with a putback. Self more than the ranked team is beating you. Good ball movement. Got it. Great shooter's touch from Samir Doughty. Lead for Auburn up to 20. And a steal. Okoro gets to hang from the rim. Timeout New Mexico. This isn't seen as a top 20 team. You need guys like Danielle Purifoy. When it's their moment and it's their time that they start to elevate their game. And Okiki, you're talking about a big chunk of your assists and rebounds walking out the door as well. And more exciting to call a game. Nice backdoor cut for Keith McGee. That's off the front rim. And the long rebound is run down by Caldwell. And a block in transition, but goaltending call on Devin Cambridge. Zane Martin. Hands one off to Caldwell, who banks it in. I think with a couple of the guys from Auburn, there's a lot of reason to be excited. But this team, watch Jared Harper and the freedom that he had a season ago and was like, I want, a, I want a piece of that. I want to be able to have the opportunity to have that, mu that much freedom compete at the SEC, which is something the program hadn't been able to accomplish prior to his arrival in quite some time. Now, you got guys all over the floor. And that, you know, a guy believes it. And, and everybody talks about the, you know, a Final Four bump. When you go to the Final Four, McGee with a chance for a three-point play. It's a so, basketball school. Yeah, Kentucky is like Indiana. I mean, they're I mean, in a major yes. football conference. They're looked upon as a basketball school, but there are other programs in the SEC. Florida just got the job. He would take the band. He would show up in lecture halls. I mean, Bruce was everywhere on campus. Now he does it again. And all this. Look, when you're good, you're good. You look at the softball rankings, you know what you see a lot of? That's right. SEC schools. You look at women's soccer in the NCAA tournament right now. On the game for him, but Samir Doughty, efficiency 5 of 9 from beyond the arc, 19 points again for him. Aggressive of attacking the hoop. Their shooting percentage is way up, shooting 52% here in the second half versus the 31%. Now he can relax, it's 20. Early in the season, though, when you are trying, as Wiley throws it down. That's right. I mean, a game, it's still a game against an opponent you don't know. And a nice alley oop finished by McGee, valuing each opportunity in November and December, especially before you get into the heart of conference play, as Wiley throws it down again. It's emergency that you're going to need in January when you're on the road in conference play. Okoro throws it down as well. Do you even watch this film? Some coaches yes. have the burn the tape philosophy as McGee goes baseline and gets to dunk again. How many dunks is that in a row, by the way? Is that five straight dunks? Little things that you don't think about when you have a big that can post up and carve out that much space. Air is Wiley on the defend the post. And as you defend the post, if you go one on one, he's got the size advantage in most opportunities he can score. If you don't defend him and you. And he's still working hard inside as Purifoy. In and out for three. There's Wiley on the offensive glass. He is just putting on a clinic in the paint. This is right now, but a little bit different than the team that you saw a year ago, but still the success rate is going to be there for Bruce Pearl's team. Okoro adding to the lead. Half minutes for Bruce Pearl's team. It's, it's a great opportunity again to have a chance to get game action. How about that spin move? That was good. Welcome to the game, Jalen Williams. Shoot around here at the Barclays Center. And then they had to just randomly shoot free throws and didn't want to do a lot until the sneakers showed up, which were actually already on the bus. Coach Mooney putting Austin Wiley in those side on ball screens defensively, having to guard Grant Golden. And as Blake Francis looks to attack off of that, is a team that came into tonight. The only team in Division I with three players averaging better than 18 points a game. So they can fill it up. It'll be fun to watch tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. And this Auburn Tigers team coming into this game, a lot of high expectations, didn't disappoint tonight. They rolled.